Hi, my name's Will McCammon. Uh, you might know me on the forums as DJ Dude. I'm one half of Teneshington Decals, and I'm here to do a quick out-of-the-box preview of the Amarillo Design Bureau and Mongoose Publishing joint venture Starline 2500 Federation Fleet box of miniatures. I'm going to pull out the uh, free pocket size, almost, version of the uh, a called arm Starfleet rules. It's a nice little condensed version of the rule set. Within the box again, lots of minis are all individually bagged as with the other products. Uh, one thing you'll notice about the uh, the new resin minis is stands. Lots and lots of stands. Here we go. So it looks like I'm starting smallest minis first. These are the shuttlecraft. These were done in metal. Uh, they have their own small size stand basically round base triangular riser on it with a hole sorry I can't get much detail on this camera phone shot they're about a half inch long they have some nice detail to them these would for you know as little shuttles actually get used in Federation Commander and a call to arms these are plenty not a problem they're basically just markers so six of these plus their own little micro stand Next one's in the box is a pair of the Federation Police Cutters. This is a really nice little mini. Um, this is one I think where there's, it's definitely improvement over the uh, Starline 2400 metal version. Again, the, the slight increase in size allows for some more detail. And this is also a case where because they were all computer modeled, a lot of proportions issues and scale issues were able to be addressed. Um, the engines are great, given the size. Definitely one of my favorite minis are the new line. A lot of chances to make it better, and, and those we're taking advantage of. Uh, box includes three of the Federation Burke class frigates. Another mini that is just leaps and bounds better than the original metal version. The metal version of the Starline 2400 was basically a carryover from the 20-year-old metal Starline 2200 one from the early 80s which was a, a great mini but the game had kind of walked away from it the engines weren't right anymore um, when Nick Blank did his deck plans this upper command hull was invented with a little teardrop shape so this was a chance to bring the the mini back up to speed with where the game had gone in the intervening 25 years um, it has the appropriate weapon mounts now it's a great little mini uh, the details Pretty phenomenal. You can actually even see the little drone hatch, shuttle bay door, nice slots for the engines to assemble. I've built this one from the squadron box and it pretty much just shake the bag and the mini will fall out. It doesn't take much more than a little bit of sanding to make everything fit perfect. Um, these also include itty bitty little um, white metal sensor dishes that attach over this little post on the bottom. So they have a little uh, depression in them. You fit that over that little nub there and they sit just right. Which is going to be a little more durable than the old tiny tiny little peg in a hole situation that some of the old minis had which wasn't very strong. You breathe on it wrong and it would pop loose. Uh, the box also includes two of the uh, Ramius class battle frigate which was a general war improvement over the frigate to try and keep it competitive. It's basically the frigate with uh, a third engine and a tiny little bit of extension to the hull. Uh, another, there's not much to say, it's, it's every bit as good as its little brother. They just added the third engine with some more nice detail and an extra hull extension. Wasn't broke, so they didn't have to do much to make it better. It's nice that the box actually has a nice spread of ship sizes. That was something where the squadron boxes fell down a little bit. It was, it was all cruisers and one frigate and a dreadnought. Nice, powerful fleet, but for actually fleet building for point value, it's nice to have a spread of small ships and medium-sized ships you can really use all your points up and not just be stuck with a couple giant ships and then you have wasted points uh, the next ships in the box going up in size again is the federation uh, texas class old light cruiser and uh, if you don't know the backstory on these these look quite different than the other ones because they're about 100 years older this was a terran earth built ships originally that were then just kept in service, basically for cost efficiency. 
they were still working, so they just kept refitting them over and over and over and kept them in service. So they look quite a bit different. In the game, they're a great little mid-sized ship for mid-sized jobs. Um, I'm not a particular fan of the new version. I thought the old one had a kind of a clunky elegance all its own. And this new version added this uh, big band across the middle and got rid of some of the angular streamlining that the old one had. It's it's a perfectly serviceable mini, and I'm sure you know I have five of them now, I believe. And I will be gaming with them plenty. So, happy to have it. The detail's great, as with all the others. So it's a great mini, just from an aesthetic standpoint. This is one of the ones where I wasn't too keen on the changes that were made. And that's just me being pedantic, so no big deal. Fishing around in the box here. It's a big box, a lot of minis. Is the Federation Prometheus class strike cruiser. It's the uh, the famous TV ship's slightly smaller brother. Um, very, very similar, except for slightly reduced size in the rear hull. And the engines are mounted flat instead of at that V shape the TV ships had. These are definitely, they've caught up the quality. It's a shame that it's right when they got it all dialed in, they're now walking away from doing these in resin. They've switched to metal. My understanding was that was more of a production efficiency thing. They just couldn't make these quick enough, which explains the delays. Shame, because they are beautiful. Just gorgeous. What looks like they finally got it all nicely dialed in. So these will be an absolute pleasure to assemble. This is the uh, Wolverine class fast cruiser with its spiffy little spade shaped go fast saucer. Quite a bit of change to the weapons mounts on it. The engines are on these kind of spiffy little raked struts. Again, no pits, no voids, no underfill. If I, you know, if I didn't know better and just looked at this really fast, I would almost think this was injection molded. It's really nicely done. A little bit of an underfill along the top of the rear hull. And that was a big problem with a lot of the older production runs. They, uh, would always underfill along this, and it'd be a big ridge that you'd have to fill in sand. This is just about the only one in this box that has it, and that's 30 seconds work with some putty and a sanding stick, so it's not anywhere near as bad as they had been, and it's only one out of what I've looked at eight so far, so. I think it's time for, yeah, the most famous ship in science fiction. So these are the Constitution class heavy cruisers. You get two of these. So the famous TV ship, it's done beautifully. Again, they really got the casting dialed in with these. Um, nice individual weapon mounts. The saucer pattern is on the hulls. Very nicely cast. Running lights. The underside has, again, the phenomenal detail. These uh, Starline 2500 minis have added a lot of details that weren't on the old ships, like the triangular details on the front face of the lower saucer, which varies what people think those are, but that's something that typically wasn't, hadn't been represented on the older minis. So definitely brought the detail up a notch. Secondary hull has all the weapon mounts molded in. Sorry about the focus. Again, no pits, no voids, a little bit of flash, nothing that a quick swipe with an emery board or something won't take care of. Um, these, these, again, will be a lot of fun to assemble. The uh, box also includes two of the uh, Kirov-class battlecruisers, the uh, TV ship's big brother. Um, these are one of the ones where, man, this just is the whole reason for doing this line, if you ask me. The old metal battlecruiser mini was not so good. It suffered from a, a lot with the molding issues where it was squished and the engines weren't round anymore and the rear hull wasn't anywhere near as big as it should have been because it had been squished. So this was just a chance for them to really kick it up. So the saucer, very, very similar to the heavy cruisers, but they did add some detail on the top surface and then especially on the bottom to represent the very small center warp engine. First time that's ever been on a mini of this ship, which is great. The uh, secondary hull is just a tiny bit larger than the uh, TV ships, which again is just a great upgrade. It's a little hard to see, but you can see it's just a tiny bit bigger, which is all it should have been. So that's a, another wonderful change that they made. Also has the added uh, 
gun house at the base of the neck, somewhat similar to the movie ship. For the weapons that vary with the different subclasses of the Kirov. The engines on this ship are flat, as opposed to the V shape that the TV ship had, so these plug straight into the sides of the secondary hull. They're very nicely represented. Nice molded in detail on the strut itself for the intercoolers. All these ships typically have that kind of detail on the strut. This will be a joy to wash or bring out the detail with the painting process. And then finally, in the box, is the Big Mamma Gemma, the Federation Class Dreadnought, another beautiful mini. Uh, the casting on this is just phenomenal. It's amazing how much better they got just in the last four or five months. It was a very long wait. I had some considerable frustration with having my pre-order paid for many, many months ago and then having to wait and wait and wait. And they had quite a few missed delivery dates. Well, they thought it was going to come together, and then things happened, and it was frustrating for all involved, but in the end, the product itself is really, really good. Well worth the money. Um, given the amount of detail on these, I'm thrilled with how they turned out. And from what I've seen, the metal versions that they've moved to are every bit as good. There's just a bit of difference because of the change in production approach with the metal, but uh, really digging these. If you're not familiar with the Federation Dreadnought, they did change a few things on this. Uh, the old Franz Joseph design from the tech manual from the mid-70s. It's, uh, this still has the same three engines with one of them mounted above the saucer. Sorry about getting that out of frame there. But the secondary hull was changed on the old Franz Joseph one. It had a the shuttle bay had been moved to the front edge and there was an additional sensor dish on the back. That was made more rational with this. It's a... Uh, Got a sensor dish in the front, just like the TV ship, and the, the shuttle bay was moved to the back. And it, it just makes more sense this way, especially in, when you look at it compared to the other ships. Um, that secondary hull is quite a bit larger than the cruisers tend to have, which is nice for the additional volume. Makes this ship seem... The saucer itself is also much larger, so this ship has a great deal of weight and presence to it on the game board. Um, the engines plug in straight rather than a V-shape, which is the more modern Starfleet Universe version of things. The Battle Cruiser and the Strike Cruiser share that. And that's pretty much it for this box. Again, that's uh, about $100 retail if things haven't changed. Uh, you get 16 ships in total, I believe is the number, plus the stands, plus the free version of the rules. Uh, well, worth it in my opinion despite the weight, and I think it's certainly a good investment for anyone that's interested in any of these game systems. So Call to Arms, Federation Commander, Starfleet Battles, if you're a miniatures gamer, I think this is definitely well worth your time. Uh, I pre-ordered enough ships that I went over the dollar threshold where you, I got the free pack-in Command Cruiser, just basically just the, uh, the TV ship Heavy Cruiser, with a few little extra add-on details on the saucer. And they uh, did some more kind of swept struts on the engines. For the price, which was free, sure, great, neat, nice to have another Mini. Uh, in the Starfleet Universe game system, the Command Cruiser really doesn't look any different externally than the, the TV ship Heavy Cruiser. So this was kind of... I'm happy to have it, but it was not needed from a gaming standpoint. But hey, it's free Mini, I'm not going to complain. It's very nicely cast, so it's cool. I'll do something with it. So, hope you enjoyed this little quick walk through the box, and uh, if you have any comments, just feel free to leave them. Thanks.